morning world and welcome to Tuesday 8th of November and another calf. Right, that's her separated, apart from one big steer, which we've left in with her, mainly because I've got to take a big steer in to slaughter today, so he, uh, he fits the bill quite nicely. So I'm going to leave her down there. She's actually, actually, I don't really want to eat in those cleansings. I'm going to get a fork and we'll move that if she let me near it, and then she can concentrate on her calf rather than the afterbirth. Right, let's see what sort of temper she's got. Come on, I just want to pick that up and get rid of it, okay? You don't want to be eating that. Nasty. I'll get shot of that. Most of you know what a placenta is, but that is, that is placenta, so that is the bag, basically, that the calf I spent the last, well, nine months in. Uh, calf's been born, the bag is no longer of any use, so she expels that as well. Cleans everything out inside, all fresh and new, ready for, well, next year's calf, which we'll give to her in a couple of months. Well, but as is big, a couple of weeks, but yeah. I'm gonna let her just settle down for a minute. That calf is, she's only just, delivered her placenta. That car has been born hour, hour and a half. So uh, he's up, he's looking for the tit. I don't know, I think he's found the tit. So basically I want him to have some food before I start messing about with him. So I think now what we'll do is we're gonna move her into there, give that a good clean out in there, Sp quick spray down with a bit of disinfectant, then, um, It'll be fresh bed in there, and then she and her calf can go in here. And I'm going to have to knuckle down and build this pen in here because I think the cows and calves are going to come in here. So I've got, I've got to move all this stuff. Up amongst everything else that's got to be done today, and there's a lot to be done today. I rung up from um, stock pen yesterday and I'm that far away from ordering another load of this stuff. Um, the way this barn is, um, I've got a choice. I can either put up uh, permanent barriers and fencing on that side to put cattle in there or I use hurdles. Now, to me, having the barn that I can take it all apart and uh, have an open space. It's quite important. So um, although the hurdles are eye-wateringly expensive because obviously they're stick well, they're substantial and they're metal. Uh, <coughs> again, I think for me, it's as much, uh, it's as much for my safety, because bearing in mind, unlike most other farm channels you might watch who have staff, brothers, 
dads, other members of family. It's not just people working alone. I predominantly and mainly and nearly always am working on my own. And with cattle, there's, there's inherent risks of damage <laughs> to me um, working alone with cattle. So anything I can do to make life a bit easier and like I was explaining to my brother yesterday, because he said, oh, do you really want some more? And I said, I, I, I don't want to pay for it, but at the end of the day, if I buy these panels at, say, £150 a piece, for example, in 15 years' time, they'll probably still be worth £150 each, if you understand what I mean. So if, as and when the time comes when I said I've had enough, with cattle or whatever, I can't do it, I'm too old or, you know, disabled or whatever reason. Um, it's not money, it's not money lost. I haven't lost the money. I've just converted it from a liquid form that is spendable into a solid form that has to be liquidated before I expend it. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. So, um, um, so yeah, so although it is expensive um, and I've got other things I could put money to, I think keeping me safe and making it easier to handle animals and put stuff together etc etc I think it's a good idea so um, yeah I've just got to check my numbers but I think it's going to be a call to I think it's Edward at Stock Fence later today and we're going to order another 10 panels I think it's going to be another vet gate two more sliding gates these fellas and i've also put on the list of things i want as a, the crush because you can you can turn this into a, a crush or right, it's more suitable for big animals rather than the dexters so it's not ideal for dexters but it means it's got a system that i can if i had to i could take it apart transport the whole lot on the back of my land rover or the back of a truck or trailer and take it to the other farm and set up a system over there including a crush should i need to and I haven't got to carry a full-size crush. Yeah, well, that's the plan. It keeps me safe. It keeps the vets safe when they're doing TB testing and everything else because we're on twice a year of TB testing now. So having the extra handling will enable me to build more systems. And yeah, it is basically, to be honest, I'm justifying the cost on safety, keeping me alive, standing upright, and all my bones in where they're supposed to be. Right, I'm going to let her come through into this side and then I can clean that side out. <coughs> right, will she come through by herself? I don't know if I chuck a bit of food in there, she will. Go on, go on, through there. Go on. Go on, baby. There you go. Go on, there you go. All right, they were in no hurry. I gave them a nudge. Clean bed, mmm, and food. I got salt water out, but that's no big problem. Right, let's clean. Let's clean this out. the floor up off, fork that in there. Uh, laziness doesn't always pay. So I could scratch about and try and get this in the bucket, like I said. Um, and, and I would do it. I would get this in the bucket. It wouldn't be a problem. The problem would be the that it wouldn't just be the muck I got in here. I'd end up picking up half the floor as well. Especially with 
this bucket, which a lot of you know is past its sell-by date. <laughs> I know, I know some of you get quite cross with me about this bucket. Why haven't I done this and why haven't I done that? Well, I mean, they could come up with lots of excuses, but I haven't got around to it. That's all it is. I just haven't got around to it. I've had other things to do that have been, frankly, a bit more important than fixing a bucket. So it's not like I haven't got another bucket. I've got the five foot. It's just that I prefer the six foot, this one, because I can see in it from the cab better. It's just easier to use. Actually, nothing wrong with that. That can go back on the floor in there. You can have that in there. Good enough to lie on. So, yeah, well, just get this out of here. Mix up a bit of disinfectant. Spray the floor off. Scratch that last bit out of there first. Spray the floor off. Clean bed. And then we'll see if we can get Madam out there in with her baby. bed we're nearly there <coughs> well I might as well make it comfortable aren't I All we've got to do is get mummy and baby in there. Okay, so we've got her separated in the shed, but her demeanor is, don't come close to my calf. I mean, she hasn't actually finished cleansing yet. So I think what I might do is leave her for an hour. I'll leave that open just in case the calf decides to go to her side, because calves tend to go into corners. And she might, I might actually come home and find her in there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave them to it for an hour just to get to know each other and then we'll come back and pen her up then. So she's separated from the rest of the cattle for a minute, so she can't come to any harm. Yeah, I think that's the best plan. Do you remember I emptied that out? Was it two days ago? And most of that was last night. I'm not sure. It's only the 8th of the month. I'm not sure if that's going to last the end of the month before it's overflowing again. But yeah, just show of 20 millimetres in uh, three days. So like that. Yeah. We complained it was dry. Now we can complain it's too blimmin' wet. 
Okay, well, it looks like my cunning plan didn't work. I've been away from the farm for an hour and I kind of hoped that that cow and calf would have found their way in there. And they haven't. So, right, she's, she's a little bit flighty, so I don't like this. This is something I don't really approve of, but sometimes you need something that to just deter the cow from knocking you over. So this is hollow 20 mil pipe. So it's not really bad. It's just, you know, safety. Am I going to be able to get her to come through here? Right, darling, have you finished dropping your cleansings now? Yeah? All gone? So, where does he think he's going? All right, you. So, I want to get him and her up through there. And I'm looking at her and she's saying, no, I don't want to go. I'm not keen on the idea. And yeah. Yeah, I'm reading the body language. The thing is, when you're on your own, even with a bit of blue pipe, it's not always worth the risk. Hmm. All right, well, um, I just spotted an opportunity to tag the calf safely, which is something I've got, got to do. So I've taken it, so I didn't have the camera on, but basically, I managed to get the calf into the race, which puts a gate between me and mum. Because she's not overly friendly, and I may not get a better opportunity. Mm. All right, girl. Mm. All right, darling, all right, okay. I know you're not happy about it. Okay. That's that done. So now I just need to get this little girl. She's a lovely little girl, isn't she? Got your tic-tac right. See, I'm not hurting her. I'm not hurting her. She's okay. But I just need to get her round there. I may have to put the camera down for this. I need to have my hands, feet and wits and everything else about me. Hmm, I wonder. All right, slight change of tactic. I've put the cow in that side, calf in this, so she can watch me take her baby through there, which I'll do slowly. And then hopefully put the calf in, hoping that she will go around and find her calf because she's seen where it went. Chances of success, yeah, slim. Mm. Come on, Tiddler. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna open the gate now so I'm behind it, and I'm hoping she's gonna follow her calf up through. Hoping. Come on, girl. Come on. Go on, let it go find it. Go on. Go on. No, that's the wrong way. He's up there. Go on. That's where he is. He's up there. Go find him. Her, even. He's not up here. He's not up there, and he's not in there. Plan C. Come on it. There she is. I'm just gonna come around behind you. So if she actually pushes this gate now, um, the gate's just swinging. So if she pushes the gate, she will go in there. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try it. Come on up. 
Come on then, go find your baby. Here yeah. you go. There you go. Go on, in you go. Oh, finally. Um, could I have just put the rope around the calf's neck, dragged him up in there, her up in there, put her in there? Possibly. Possibly. Was I willing to take that risk? No. No chance. Okay. Mission's accomplished. She's got hers. She's got hers. Is your water all right? Don't want topping up. I will top that up in a minute. Okay. Now we're sucking diesel. I wanted to get that done because um, cattle are shut out. They can't get to that bale. They're not happy about it. Not one bit. All right, you can come in now and stop whinging. You have to move from there. Go on. Ah, it's getting mucky out here now, isn't it? Look at the state of it. I've just spoken to Ed at Stock Fence. Ah, oh, and no, I said yes. Oh. So, um, <laughs> it's one of those things, like I said earlier, um, that's good kit. Um, it makes my life so much safer. So much, and, and literally just now, getting her in there, um, I've ordered another 10 hurdles, uh, two more of these sliding gates, um, another vet gate, which is one of these guys, so which is um, it means the vet hasn't got to climb over, and it also also means uh, it's just safer. Thing. It's an escape route for them. This, this usually goes on uh, behind the crush, so that that forms part of the uh, race for the crush. I've ordered another one of those, and I've also ordered um, uh, another gate. It's a ten-foot gate that sits inside a frame. It was loads of money. Oh God, bloody hell. Even though you see, it's like a 900 pound gate. It's, I still can't believe I said yes, but I did. Don't worry Ed, I'm not gonna change your mind. Um, and it's literally a gate that fits in the system that I can actually have an opening and closing gate. And again, I could use that on as one of these. So I could have that maybe as if I'm building the pens, I could use that instead of having the vet gate, I could have a four size gate in and out of there. So it's built into its own frame and fits into the system. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be one of those things, the painful bit's gonna be paying for it. Once, I, once that's done, I'm, I'll have it forever. It's always gonna be here. Um, and as long as I'm strong enough to pick these things up and move them about, and even if I'm not, I'll find one of my guys could help me out. Um, this just means that now I could, if I wanted to, when this arrives, I think it's coming tomorrow or next day, I could build another two of these, if not three, if I wanted to, I could put pens all down the wall. And when I'm done, I can take them all apart and stack them up out the way and the barn's free again. So do you see what I mean? It's, it's nice having a, a cow shed and barns with everything set in concrete and it's all permanent and it's for that job. It's fantastic, but my way of thinking is, yeah, it's a big Meccano set, but I can put it together, I can take it apart, I can reshape it, I can redesign it, I can build a system out of it, because we will then have um, 31 of these guys. I did actually buy one um, from Moor Valley that was an IAE one, which I will say, it's not as strong as these. These are more substantial. Um, I'll have 31 of those panels, five sliding gates, two vet gates, and I should be able to build a system to do anything inside the barn. And I've also asked him if he will build me. I've got to do a drawing and send it to him. I want four of these barriers, but these are too big for what I want. So four of those, that will fit into that system. So there'll be 10 foot barriers 
with narrower Dexter size or young stock size, narrower feed bars. And then basically if I wanted to, I could then put four of those across the front and I could feed outside. Or if I build a pen in there, I could feed outside. I'm just trying to think of ways where I can build stuff that, um, yeah, I can either have the barn completely clear or I can build what I want as I need it. Understand? So yeah, it's a chunk. Of, it's a chunk of it's a chunk of money, and for the same money, I could probably, maybe, nearly, concrete that yard, which is something I'd also love to do, and it is on my to-do list is to concrete this yard. Next year, next year, I would like to do that. I want to do it this year. We built that instead. Um, use the money for that. I want to do that next year if I can. Um, and I'll be perfectly honest, without YouTube and the income I get from YouTube, there's no way. No way I could do it. So, so I want to thank all of you who watch my videos, watch the adverts, click the like button, make a comment because, believe it or not, clicking the like button and leaving a comment, even if it's just a smiley face. I mean, that's all your comment needs to be. A thumbs up, a smiley face, you've left a comment. That increases the algorithm for YouTube, increases the value of the channel, and it means I can spend, or I have more, more money I can spend on this kind of stuff to make life better for the cattle and safer for me. So for that, I thank you. And in particular, to our members, who, I'll be perfectly honest, I mean, you pay me a monthly membership and you don't get that much in return. And I know that, and I really, really appreciate it. So, so thank you to everybody, members, subscribers, all of you. Because without you, I couldn't have built that. I probably wouldn't have been able to buy that fertilizer. And I would not, I would not. Well, no, actually, maybe even that. You put some money into that as well. And without your future uh, support, or the idea of your future support, I don't like spending money ahead, um, I would never be able to buy this system because I'll give you a taste. The, everything I've just ordered, and you heard what it was, that's gonna be proud of 4,000 pounds. Okay, so yeah, it is a chunk of cash, but in 10 years time, it'll still be worth 4,000 pound. It's not what I would call a, although I can depreciate it if you tax me, what, it's not a depreciating asset, it holds its money. It's galvanized, it's well built, it's well put together. So unless the price of steel drops through the floor, which I can't see happening, ever, I can see everything is getting more expensive. What I paid for that, it's still worth it today. So when I retire and whatever else, I can cash it in and have my money back. So it's not, it's not money spent, it's money converted into something else to make their life easier, my life safer, and if I want, I can always liquidate it and get it back. So it's not wasted, it's not thrown away, it's not, it's not lost, okay? That's how, that's how I'm justifying it to myself, so. Right, I'm gonna give a bell to these guys in here, I've got an hour till lunch. I'm having a piece of Dexter's steak for lunch today, which I'm really looking forward to. And then this afternoon, we've got to load him up. I think it's him with his head through the gate. Him up onto the trailer, and I'm afraid he's off to the factory because we've got beef packs coming back for uh, first week of December. I believe there's still Two packs up for grabs. I've not actually advertised it yet properly. So uh, six packs are sold. I've got two packs left to go. So yeah, if you want one, I'm gonna put it on my Facebook page, which is how I normally advertise these guys. Probably tomorrow or next day, I'll go on my Facebook page. So if you want one, it's probably already gone. But if you wanna contact me just in case, you never know. So see, he knows so much going on. He's thinking about launching himself over that gate. He won't. I may have accidentally, not on purpose, left something in the feed rack. Just, you know, 
Um, can I have that? Thank you. Ta, you don't want that. It's not edible. So actually, they're going to be quite, quite happy to be joined back together. These, these two actually grew up together. They came from the same farm. I bought these two. Well, they were heifers when I bought them. But they came from a local, local farm. And they were offered to me because they were going out of Dexter's. And I thought they were such lovely looking cattle. There's these two and a black one. So, and they're actually numerically in, so 17, 19, and the black one is number 18. But uh, yeah, she's, uh, they're gonna be glad to be back together. So, although I do need to put your ear tags back in, don't I? You keep pulling them out. Both of them, in fact. Both of these red cows, I'll put tags in them, and then six months later, I'm, I'm reordering tags. I don't know what it is. It's gates, actually, I think that's what it is. Uh, but I found your tag out in the middle of the field not that long ago when we were walking the dogs. Sadly, only half of it. The other half has gone somewhere. Okay, right. I better get another bell then, I? Hey, you up here now? Hey, how are you? You're a bit less stressed now, aren't you? Baby's up in the corner. I'm gonna um, take all these out of the barn here, and I'm gonna put, I need to be able to get to that, so I'm just gonna put some pens up here and then through the middle there and back onto the gate there so that we can actually um, give the cows some water, and I think the cows and calves, for the time being, I'm going to make a pen up in here that as, I, as they come out of there, they've been mothered up and they're paired up. I'm going to let them out into here. They'll have a proper water supply over there. And um, yeah, they'll start mingling in here. I think so. And I can use those feed barriers as well if I need to then. Options. Like I said, it's a big, what I'm getting is a big Meccano set. I can build it, I can take it down, I can adjust it. I can, for me, for what I do, I think it is by far. Rather than spending tens of thousands of pounds, well, well, yeah, potentially tens of thousands of pounds on fixing stuff, concrete it in, and I have no options, but that's what it is, to keeping myself flexible. I like flexible. Bloody phone.